Uganda, vibrant and thriving, but like all growing countries in Africa, there's a huge demand for energy. Until recently, Ugandans suffered frequent blackouts from load shedding, often for more than 12 hours daily. Blackouts are not just inconvenient, but expensive, resulting in a serious loss of income. It used to be on and off, at least every day, every week. We used to have power two to three days in a week. The business was low. There was no business, because the place could become dark. We had no choice just to close up and go home. And it's not just small businesses that suffer, but large industries that provide livelihoods for tens of thousands of people all over the country. It is the worst thing that you can face in terms of a growing economy. Power is the driver of everything. You, you look at small shops, be they printing presses, be they uh, transporters who are moving our product to Kampala and to other places where people are constructing. So having idle labor and yet uh, costs were all shooting up. The lack of energy capacity meant relying on very expensive thermal energy generators and imported diesel at a heavy cost to the environment. It hinders economic development. Uganda's economy was shrinking by 1.5% a year with potentially serious long-term implications. But Uganda is blessed with a resource that can help create energy which is green and renewable, the fast-running waters of the Nile. Bujagali Energy Limited, or Bell, was formed by the Aga Khan Fund for Economic Development, Scythe Global, a company majority owned by investors of Blackstone Group and Uganda's government. This public-private partnership is using the Nile's natural resource to help provide the badly needed energy. Bell has constructed the Bujagali Hydropower Project, one of the largest independent power plants in sub-Saharan Africa. It has the capacity to produce 250 megawatts of energy. Just a few months after becoming fully operational, it is already providing 49% of Uganda's energy needs. The proportion of Uganda's electricity generated with renewable sources has risen to 90% making Uganda's grid one of the greenest in the world. The $860 million project employed 3,000 people at the peak of construction. Many of these workers have taken their skills to other construction sites or are getting further training at Bujagali. There were many challenges during the construction, some of them unexpected. Initially starting right off, there was riots in Kenya. Uh, we've had a ship hijacked with a very crucial component of our, our turbine on it. We also had uh, ships collide uh, with our cargo in it and our cargo went into the sea. So just getting the materials here to build this project uh, has been a challenge. Actually, despite all the challenges and everything that we faced, we're on time and on budget with this project. Bell has developed a number of social programs in the surrounding community. The local wildlife was protected throughout the construction and hundreds of trees are being planted. We have undertaken a number of programs to ensure that the environment is not affected. And one of the major programs has been the reforestation of the river bank. We have planted over 400 hectares of trees between Bujagari Dam and Kalagala area along the river bank. Bell ensured the local communities are better off than they were before the dam was built. People have seen a lot of improvement since the project came in. They came up with the, uh, what we call a community development action plan. And uh, our local communities have benefited through that program a lot. Uh, in the, the areas of education, health, agriculture, 
and so many other. Nine villages in the area now have access to piped water and electricity. Oyete Kalori of Naminya village has no electricity. He relies on paraffin lamps, which he says harms his home and the health of his family. This smoke is dangerous, very dangerous to our lives, to the property. property. When you breathe, you breathe it in. Hmm? But his life will soon be transformed. He's about to be connected to the electricity grid now that his village has power. He says he will use the electricity to generate more income by opening up a hairdressing saloon in his house and improve his existing business of poultry farming. The tourism industry has also received a boost from the project. The rafting business continues to attract thrill seekers downstream, while the cruise business on the lake behind the dam has actually increased overall revenues. The tourist numbers have fairly increased, probably by maybe, I could say 10%, because most of those clients do not prefer going rafting every day, but they would rather do sunset or lunch cruises every day or every weekend. Businesses up and down the country, from the important fishing industry to construction companies, have benefited from this reliable source of energy. Uganda has also gained. Revenues, after subsidies on electricity were removed, amount to $9.5 million a month. You know, you are talking about closer to 8% of the overall national budget going into subsidies in one sector. And imagine the you know, the, the seriousness of the issue. The government is also gaining carbon credits worth 900,000 carbon emission reductions. But there is still some way to go before affordable energy is available to a larger population. The infrastructure needs to be repaired and the grid expanded. Uganda needs to raise $400 million to upgrade the grid and increase access. It plans to increase access from 15 to 30 percent of the population over the next 10 years. For now, the existing steady supply of electricity is benefiting health institutions all over the country and saving lives, especially in the rural areas like the villages near Bujagali. Certainly, it helped a lot in, in saving lives, mainly of the newborns. Uh, because uh, can you imagine conducting delivery in darkness on a torch? And uh, um, I'm sure our patients were so much motivated to come to, to, to this LFA facility because of electricity. They, they see light as, as life. And the increased capacity is also assuring the future of the country in another way, empowering students to study late into the night and with the tools necessary for their advancement. So without electricity, then the, the computer lab will not be running, internet will not be running. Uh, even the computer itself, live along the internet, even the computer itself will not be running. Students need to type their assignments. The, the institution is, has also of recently been moving towards a, a new approach of learning. We, are, we set up uh, student learning sites. So those would not be running if we do not have electricity. Although Uganda has dramatically increased its energy supply, it will need to produce more to keep up with extra demand. It will need more projects and more public and private partnerships like the one created for the Bujagali project. Resources are scarce. So sometimes as government, when you want to put up a power plant infrastructure like this, you may not have resources to do so. So if you have got a partner who comes in, that is success. And even then, for government, if you have to borrow money from uh, other financing institutions, it takes a very long time. So that also delays development in a way. So those are things that the government should be able to do anywhere, provide land, provide the transmission facility, while the public sector const uh, constructs the generation plant. So I think it's a, a model that can be sold to many parts of the world, in this, especially in Africa here. Bujagali has been successful 
because of the pillars of good enabling environment, solid partners uh, and, 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 and lenders that trusted uh, the, the vision of the sponsors and the government and uh, that has, is what has resulted in a very successful Bujagali Hydro Power Project which is on budget and on time which is totally unique for this part of the world considering the size and the complexity of the project. Bujagali is the ideal model for replication. Such projects will be needed throughout the region to provide clean, renewable and affordable energy to help improve the quality of life of the people in Eastern Africa. Bujagali is not just a commercial project, it is an engine for economic growth, creating jobs and allowing businesses to expand, all part of the long-term economic development process. Whatever we do, we should have in our mind the development aspect and the future support that we are going to be able to give to projects in Africa. What we in AGFED believe is that this future development of Africa should be done in a responsible way. So that it's not just here, uh, come and do a hit and miss and, and take whatever you can and go away.